Welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. Welcome back to my shop here in Burnville, Pennsylvania, and welcome to day two of the madness, which is watching me prepare for the Woodstock Luthiers Invitational Showcase, uh, which is really coming up in, well, really I have less than two weeks to get the instruments ready that I want to have ready for this. We'll see if I get them completed in time, and um, yeah, anyway, I'm wasting time talking about it. It's already noon. I had a bunch of stuff to do this morning, so once again, it seems I'm always either having to end early or getting a late start, which is just the reality of running a business. Things come up. So anyway, I'm going to start getting frantic here and, uh, and moving with haste, okay? So that's what this really is, what you came to watch, is Luthery with haste. So I'm going to start by working on guitar number 86, which is hanging in the other room in the true oil, or in the room where I'm doing my true oil finishing. And uh, going to get another coat on. Might be the last coat. It all depends on, on how it comes out and how I, how I like it, how it looks. Uh, but we're getting pretty close to the final coat on that. So I'm going to get that squared away, and then we will return to our work on guitar number 87, which is East Indian Rosewood back and sides and Western Red Cedar top, 13 fret to the body instrument, and 25.563 inch scale length. It's a parlor guitar. Both of these guitars I'm working on for the show right now are parlor guitars. Um, I will have, I will probably have uh, triple O or an orchestra model with me at the show as well, by the way, if you, if you happen to come out and check it out, you can uh, play those instruments. All right, I'm going to get to work. Before you start your first application for the day, you know, when you're doing coats of true oil, or I should say sessions of true oil, you typically want to do mm, three to four coats in a day. That's basically all the time you have to do in a, let's say, eight hour work day. Uh, because you need two hours between each coat for things to cure. So anyway, if you've gotten three to four coats on there and you've let it sit overnight and you're coming back to it in the morning, you have the opportunity to kind of turn the whole thing over in your hands and look, I mostly look at the edges because I'm trying to see if maybe I got a little, uh, a little goopiness on the edges, which usually there's nothing, but hey, you know, everyone makes mistakes, so sometimes you get a little bit of a run there. Uh, and other than that, also just looking for lint and things like that, particularly on this Wengi, looking to see that pieces of the cotton rag that I'm using, little bits of lint haven't gotten snagged on a pour or something like that. So anyway, I have an opportunity here because the finish is fairly hard at this point, again, because it sat overnight. So I have this opportunity to take some 4 aught steel wool. Liberon is actually a good company to get good quality 4 aught steel wool. The stuff you get at, say, Lowe's or Home Depot, I find is not the same. And actually, this looks totally fine. And so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's actually probably the most important thing I can tell you is don't just go to town with the steel wool just because I said so, right? Actually look at your instrument and if nothing's there, leave it alone. Just continue applying coats. And when you get really sort of competent with this, you'll find that that's most of the time. Most of the time you shouldn't have to touch this with anything between coats. So anyway, let's get started.
Okay, getting back to guitar number 87 here, working on the neck. Like you saw in the last video, we did the mortise and tenon, got that joint all squared away. Uh, but now, we need to install the fretboard. So what I'm going to do is align this fretboard on the center line and make sure that the 13th fret lines up with our neck to body joint right here because this is a 13 frets to the body guitar not a 12 fret or a 14 i know 13 very unusual um, it has been done before though it's not just something that i'm doing here uh, there is precedent for it but it is very rare so you line up your neck to body joint fret and then to lock the fretboard's position we're going to drill three holes and insert pins to locate them and keep it from just you know, squirreling around when we apply the glue. We want this to be in a very specific location. If it slides even just a little bit, that's gonna have an extrapolation effect on how our string splay is going to run out across the body. The trick when drilling these pins is to keep this as vertical as you possibly can because if you're kind of tipping all over the place then your pins are going to be tipped and you actually won't be able to get the fretboard back off or back on again if all your pins are coming in at angles. And then this little depth flag here is also very important because the depth is important. If you drill just a willy-nilly hole that goes way too far later on when you carve your neck, you're going to notice these little wormholes in there that you might be mistaken in thinking are some natural feature in the wood. Nope, that's just the hole that you drilled earlier. The trick to getting a snug fit here so that we don't have any play in our fretboard because we really don't want that play. If it's wiggling side to side, it, again, it's going to really throw off your sort of strings play way out here at the bridge. So we can eliminate all play by simply using a pin that is slightly, just slightly, bigger than the hole that we just drilled. And what we're going to do is actually load the pin into the drill. Now this pin doesn't have any teeth. It's entirely smooth but because it's very close to the size of the hole if we use the drill to drive it down there it will just kind of melt its way into the wood voila all right let's do the rest of these Okay, the fretboard is glued up here. This has actually been sitting for two hours, so I can go ahead and start taking these off. I did also install the truss rod, of course, although, you know, it's one of those things where I could totally see myself or someone forgetting to install the truss rod, gluing the fretboard down, and then realizing it, and uh, that would suck. <laughs> Have any of you guys ever done that? I'd actually lo love to hear that let me know. I've somehow never done it, but I I've done similar things in other cases. So anyway, let's go ahead and tear this down and we can actually get started carving the neck, which is a bear of a task. That's definitely what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the evening. And I do say evening because I will be here very late. My goal might be a little too ambitious. My goal would be to actually get the neck fully carved completely by the end 
of tonight. So carved, the little details finited, and uh, at that point, maybe even I could start the neck fit or even get it attached to the guitar. But now I'm just talking crazy. I probably won't get that far, but who knows? Let's see. Well, friends, it is almost midnight here, and uh, I did pretty good. The neck is not done. In fact, this is a good time to stop right now. Actually, hours ago is probably a good time to stop. Uh, but, but this is really a good time to stop because when you get really close to the end and you're just kind of finiting the shape, the last thing I want to do is kind of rush through that part and uh, leave little lumps or inconsistent facets on the neck. So we'll just call it right here. Uh, I am done with the finish on guitar, the other guitar hanging in the other room. So that's squared away. I can put all my energy into this uh, for the rest of the time. But anyway, whew, I am tired. I've earned myself a little treat. I've been a good boy. So I'm gonna drink this and uh, cheers to you all. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.